and you still kept it together, man. Hey, it's a day boo-boo. What do we do? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Oh man. All right, let's go. <laughs> and on that note, people, this is Spencer the Gamer. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Yo, what up everybody? It's your boy Walter Doom back for another episode of Let's Talk About Horror, the horror podcast where I talk about any and everything related to the genre. And I brought my boy here with me. He is a artist, a gamer. And anything else you want to make a be <laughs> lover, homie, <laughs> friend? I don't know. I don't know what this dude want to be. <laughs> Knew him for so many years. You know, let's give it up for the homie Trey songs. Yep. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. In all seriousness, let's give it up for Spencer the Gamer, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude. It's like, how many years have we known each other, man? And, um... Let's just say since birth. This, this, is, this is aging nothing but a number. Um, <laughs> we're gonna keep it PG-13 today. Hey, you're gonna keep it PG-13? I hope you keep it PG-13. <laughs> oh... <laughs> By the way, I'm a cover fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of some type of way right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you put your faith in the wrong team. I mean, I don't know how they blew that three-one lead, but <laughs> man, you know what? It, uh, the, I, I feel like we we might be having superstitions. <laughs> the, the, the ghost of Dominique Wilkins. <laughs> oh God. Dominique Wilkins. <laughs> yeah, the right. The ghost of Ron Harper. <laughs> uh, oh, man. The ghost of any Laker that joined the Clippers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and we're not going to bring my team into this one today. <laughs> no, nah, but um, in all seriousness, do you want to talk to the audience about, like, your brand just a little bit? Uh, well, basically, I am – a artist you could probably you know look me up uh spencer the artist uh on um on instagram uh twitter you know with spencer l artist because da was taken um (laughs) that that sounds like my issue with my name man someone took walter doom and i and i had to be walter doom one so (laughs) (laughs) There's a Walter Doom too. <laughs> Man. <laughs> this is the remix. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm actually, you know, working on pushing my artwork to test the um elements of you know, imagination. Um and possibly change the realm of perception in regards to art. You know, what is art? Is art only defined by the mechanism of perfection or is it defined by the mechanism of creativity? You know, we should test those parallels. You know, what is color? You know, is color defined by things that are vibrant or can it also be in the, in the essence of, you know, tones? In the art world, you have, you know, black and white, and they'll say black is the um, the absence of color, while white, you know, it it's it basically brings out color. So I want to break those social norms, you know, because once you break those social norms in the art world, you break them in everyone's world, you know. Shoot, I could date an alien. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I feel like you was gonna say some shit like that. You know? <laughs> oh man. man, this is my fifth element, man. <laughs> this is my fifth <laughs> element. I'm feeling it now, man. I now know. I now know how Bruce Willis felt. 
<laughs> You're like, I want, I want a girl with like three boobies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so before we started doing the show today, you mentioned that you wanted to start like a gaming channel. I mean, you mentioned this to me like weeks ago. Yep. Um, can you tell me why you wanted to start one? So. One of the things is, you know, gaming. I love the world of gaming. I love the world of creativity. You know, one of the things with gaming, you see a lot of um, perceptions from different artists coming together to create one entity where, you know, you have regular people living in the regular world and then they turn on their systems or computers and they're able to go into this world that everyone comes and builds upon. And, you know, whether it's a series or just one individual game, it's that imagination that fuels everyone to keep playing. And it becomes, you know, a cult classic, you know, in terms of like, you know, racing, uh, shoot, shooting, you know, everything becomes, you know, some type of competition or it could become a story, you know, where it gets emotional. Yeah. What was <laughs> this guy? <laughs> I mean, that was very inspiring that you said that. You know? I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what game got you emotional? Because I know for me, uh, it would have to be Final Fantasy VII, man. Oh, oh my man. God. When Eris gets killed, bro, by Sephiroth. Spoiler to all the non-millennials. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's taking a while for the for the new version of Final Fantasy VII, but don't worry. <laughs> I know, because they're doing you'll it feel, in parts. You'll, you'll feel it. You'll feel it, because... We certainly did, even though it looked like <laughs> Super Mario meets uh, Tekken. <laughs> we were more worried about the storyline than anything, you know? Like, I have to agree. Like, seeing the emotions that Cloud went through. Yeah. You know, and his ups and downs and trying to take the weight of the world you know and people don't realize like he was just a young you know teen slash adult so you know and then you have all these older fighters that are like man come on get it together you know yeah, and then they'll be yeah. doing all the little jumping and stuff you know but it was man, yeah Baron was strategy. an asshole man <laughs> Baron was a yeah. real asshole <laughs> Bear, Bear was Mr. T. Oh. <laughs> a bit of the let's, cloud if you don't get your ass right. Let's put that out there. They freaking stole Mr. T from, from Rocky and WWE. Yeah, bruh, right. Oh, man. You're going to do what I say, fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What do you plan on achieving with like your gaming channel, man? <clears throat> uh, I want to inspire others. You know, I want, you know, I know a lot of gamers, you know, they have their platforms. And one of the major things is, you know, I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing it for, you know, everybody. You know, I want people to um, be able to speak to me and have conversations where they're, um, you know, feeling down and out, it's, it becomes, you know, that, that way to be able to connect, you know, because as organisms, as people, as entities, we should be able to interconnect, like everything happens for a reason. And I feel highly that, you know, um, watching different YouTubes and different streamings um people gravitate towards that you never know what anyone's going through and just that few second the few seconds minutes you know watching an individual and engaging can change people's lives you know so yeah 
That is true. And man. plus, I might need help with some of this. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. Uh, yeah, I remember the first time when you started telling me about like different YouTubers and all that, and you were like, "Oh man, did you check out Chris Smooth? Oh man, did you check out?" Oh man. And I'm sitting there like, "Who the fuck are these people? Like, I don't know <laughs> these niggas." <laughs> like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I watch a Chris Smooth video, and I'm like, "Oh." Oh, that dude is funny, you know. Yeah, because <laughs> you know you're you're in your own world, you know. Like people don't know what the other side of content is, you know. It's just like you know, creating artwork. You're by yourself, you know. Sometimes maybe the old days, like you had Rembrandt and mm -hmm. Caravaggio, those dudes, they'll have like a big, huge presentation, women all around. Uh, in hindsight, you could say there were rappers. Um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of Caravaggio, man, I remember I went to a Caravaggio um, ex exhibition at LACMA. Dude, seeing like some of those paintings, he painted like some huge ass paintings. And I remember seeing the paintings in those textbooks and I'm like, Okay, it's gonna be something that like you know you can see on your wall and all that, bro. That shit was Yo. was huge. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm telling like, you, I'm bro, telling you. How did he paint this without fucking it up? You know, heavy, heavy weed. <laughs> 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 or as Kanye would say, opioid, opioid, opioid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, man, like. When you look at some of those like really famous art pieces and you just think to yourself like, oh man, this couldn't be that huge in real life. You see it yeah. and, and you're like, and you're just like, how did this painter do this? Like once when you actually see like a, a real Jackson Pollock painting up close and realize yep. this dude painted a huge, painted on a huge sheet or canvas. You're just you're just blown away. Like, how did this dude do it? <laughs> like, this dude was it's, crazy. It, it's a determination factor, you know. Like, it is a lot of those paintings take a lot of, um, like, when you're mounting so much paint, layer and layer and layer. It takes yeah. so long to dry. So you're yeah. just every day. It's something different, you know. Like, and that's probably one of the biggest appreciations when you see the amount of time they take months and months and months to years to complete. I'm just like, man, it, it's, it's no wonder they t say the old saying, you know, starving artists. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're looking like one right now, bro. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so. I wanted to bring you onto the show because, you know, it's Halloween month. And since you are a gamer, I want to know your favorite, favorite, absolute favorite horror games that you have played. So if you could give me like your <sighs> top five horror games, if you have a top five. So. This is probably going to go as more slash. So, of course, I got to put the OG Mortal Kombat in there. Okay. Because um, some people just did not want to play the game for the simple fact they just didn't like the gore of it. And I remember yeah. at the arcade, that was like a big thing. Like, hey, you want to play me in Mortal Kombat? Uh, I don't know. Street Fighter versus X Men. Yeah. That's <laughs> Do you oh, kind of find it on. funny that back then, when you were young, that was the goriest game? <laughs> and for for hey, never... guys that don't know, like we were kids of the '90s, so in the '90s, this Yo. was like '92, '93. <laughs> <laughs> or tripping bad. like this game is too violent. This game is too gory. <laughs> well, when you're ripping off, when you're ripping off shoulders and taking intestines out, you know, <laughs> you know they they kind of banned uh, Freddy. You know, like yeah, to them. 
a while and you know it 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 was one of those games that revolutionized um the gaming industry full fledged you know yeah, you had I was tournaments. about to say that too I was about to say they're pretty much the pioneers of what gaming is today you know yeah cuz you wouldn't have you know a lot of these games um like uh what's the one with the dolls Um, it's with those animals. Um, sheesh. Uh, totally forgot. But you Wait, have is it a like, mobile game? you know, uh, it's like a computer game. Oh, uh, you're talking about Among Us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you have, you know, um, games like. I did not want to bring it up, but you got Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had, oh, even even during that time, you had Doom that came out. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if people know about Doom, but that was where <laughs> you were, you had to shoot your way. Oh, through. yeah, through the monsters and everything. <laughs> Oh man! And, and you had to eat dogs to survive. Anyway, <laughs> oh, that is terrible. <laughs> yeah, you're really trying to get me striped. <laughs> but they might. They they said they're redoing it, so we'll see. We will see what they come up with because that is a that is a classic. Yeah, like everybody that played computer gaming. Yeah, you played was, Doom at least once. You, you had to, because that was the free game on your basic computer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how that was legal. <laughs> like, you know, you're in a prison, you're shooting your way through everything. Then you got all these little officers beating you up, and they're like, <laughs> all, all of them are like freaking Thanoses walking around. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, I also like Castlevania. Um, that was was different for me. Um, and then you also had like um, uh, there was this one game I played a lot. Um, Luigi's Mansion. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's a Nintendo that's a Nintendo horror game. I mean it's a adventure slash horror, you know. Well, well, he's you know. Down ghost. Well, I, I guess it was kind of different because a lot of people did not expect Luigi yeah. to be in that kind of genre. Like you know, up until that time, it was like Nintendo was, you know, the Disney of video yeah. games. Yeah, it, it was very kid friendly. I mean. Even to this day, like, I think the only most extreme game I could think of that was a Nintendo game was Bayonetta 2, and that was it. (laughs) (laughs) After that, it's like, when has Nintendo ever really gotten edgy? Well, they they went back to their old ways now. They kind of (laughs) tried. You know, it's... It didn't work, though. No, no, because they're... Like I said, they're the Disney of systems, you know. So like when when people look at them, they're like, You're the model for our children. Yeah. You know, the one great thing about them is, you know, you can you know, you have the Nintendo um uh you can actually travel with it. So and not lose progress. So it's kinda it it's it's great for the kids, you know, but for me, I love to play adult games. Um, <laughs> I, need, I need some type of storyline where I feel aroused in some type of way. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that was kind of sus. <laughs> I, need, I need a connection to the story. I need something that speaks life into me. <laughs> well, speaking of gaming. And your CJ. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of gaming, man, 
What about the next gen consoles? How do you feel about that, man? Who's cheaper? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that's gonna be one of the entities. Like, who's cheaper? Who's more reasonable in terms of their system? Who's gonna have like the better specs? Um, I myself have always and stay true to PlayStation. Like, same here. I I got my first PlayStation. You know, like probably like two months before its initial like was supposed to be coming out so like playstation has always been that one like there's no dreamcast you saw what they tried to do and that was a failure um oh, it was, that was a miserable <laughs> failure you know i actually had hope for dreamcast when sonic came out but i i did too i i, I had hope for them but <laughs> They failed so miserably. <laughs> I mean, Sega themselves failed miserably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they fell for the trap in terms of the competition. You know, I yeah. felt like they gave, they sold themselves short. Um, I think they were the, trying to be like, or trying to keep up with like PlayStation and Xbox. And it's like, yeah. no, you guys were always trying to beat out Nintendo why are you yep. guys trying to compete in a field that you're not familiar with? You know, I mean, yeah, you guys had your somewhat edgy games, you know, of like Streets of Rage or anything yep. else like that. But you guys aren't, you guys aren't, you know, PlayStation or Xbox. <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> seriously. And people don't realize you got to create your own titles. Like, that's the one thing that PlayStation has over Xbox. They have tons of self-titles. Like, if we were to see a full PlayStation catalog of titles that were done through PlayStation, I don't even think we have enough time to go over all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, so, if I got some Xbox listeners <laughs> listening oh. to my podcast... <laughs> I'm Maybe telling you, Spencer the gamer guy, he don't know anything. <laughs> you know? I'm telling you, you know, I like Xbox, you know, Microsoft. Thank you, Steve Ballmer. I but, mean, you're uh, only saying that because he's like in charge of your team, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, we, speaking of your team, remember when we went to that uh, Clippers uh, <laughs> Xbox? In oh, the UK God. You did? <laughs> remember yeah. when I almost won that event? Yep. <laughs> Bruh, that was crazy. Dude, there there were a lot of people like on the stream. They were basically like, Who the heck is he? How is he beating these freaking at like yeah, it was <laughs> it was just a lot. <laughs> then I heard my name getting slandered, so I was like, No, <laughs> no. Oh wait, wait, I gotta tell this story for my audience. <laughs> <laughs> so for you guys listening right now, as you guys know, my buddy here, Spencer, is a Clippers fan. I am not. I am a Lakers fan. So he invites me to go to uh, this a Lakers club. or a Lakers fan. Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. <laughs> Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Lakers fan. You know. So you invite me to to this event. I go with you. We get there at it was what the it wasn't Beverly Connection. It was the, um, oh my yep. God, Century City Mall. That's yep. where it was. And so we go over there in the in the Microsoft store. We're playing 2K. I'm like, all right, we're gonna be playing on an Xbox. I don't ha- I don't own an Xbox. Neither do you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like whatever. The embarrassment. The embarrassment was real when we were like. We told the dude taking the list for like who's competing. He was like, "Wait, you guys don't play Xbox?" I'm like, <laughs> "No, for <laughs> one." And this is the other thing: we went to Microsoft and actually seen how Xbox was built. We both built computers. Yeah, and we could clearly see the flaws and the pluses and minuses of Xbox. Yeah, it's basically a complete computer. So if you're playing Xbox, you might as well just buy a computer and be a PC gamer. 
Yeah, <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 it, you know it's great, but like honestly, I might end up moving towards PC and PlayStation because there's certain things that PlayStation does that is like out of this world with the 4k coming oh oh man like (laughs) i think i'm gonna need some some glasses for that (laughs) i'm gonna need i'm gonna need the doc brown glasses for when he went to the future (laughs) (laughs) the doc brown glasses really where we're going there are no roads (laughs) oh my god (laughs) oh yeah for you viewers Back to the Future is a horror film. <laughs> oh, wow. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. You're going to confuse the younger viewers. <laughs> oh, oh, they're going to be confused at the first, at the first movie. <laughs> oh, because he, because of the mom and all that? Oh, that, I think they, that's the reason why they don't show it on television. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy? Isn't that his mom? <laughs> <laughs> parents parents just walk out the door oh we're not gonna tell him anything <laughs> <laughs> like bobby could find out by himself when he gets older uh, like, <laughs> 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 now but let me finish the story though because this is the best part of the story <laughs> i yeah, like well, this part <laughs> this this one still lives with me to this day so we get called up We go to our station. I'm not playing against you. You're not playing against me. We get separate opponents. So I'm playing against this guy that works for the Clippers organization. You play against an actual Clippers player. Oh, God. (laughs) And who was the player? (laughs) Patrick Beverly. Wait, Patrick mother... Mother (laughs) fucking Beverly. (laughs) A.K.A. Mr. 94 Feet himself. Man. Mr. First Team All Defense. (laughs) (laughs) That's a super inside joke. (laughs) He's that guy. (laughs) So anyway, we're playing the game. I'm playing against the guy. You know, I'm, I'm playing with a team that's like not really that good, but you know, I'm doing my best. I'm hearing you like just chattering away with Beverly. All I hear is first team all first team all defense. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I look over to your station and I was like, what? <laughs> like, did he just yell that at Patrick Beverly? Like and then all it was was just a but, shouting match he, between you he two. Started after that. It. He started it. <laughs> Let me tell you, he started it. <laughs> all I'm saying is, from my from my view, it was a shouting match after that between you two, and I was I sitting there like, "Okay." <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this: he, the exact way you see him on television, is the exact way his personality is. He's just like that with everybody. Like, but I must say, he's a humble dude. Um, <laughs> That's because you go yeah. to their events. <laughs> God, it, it, I, I got whooped. I lost by like thirty <laughs> after being up like fifteen. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh yeah, I remember after you told me about that because I was like, "How the hell did you?" Because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, "Oh, he must be putting a smackdown on Beverly." I had it, but then <laughs> all of a sudden, he's like, "Okay, I'm making a substitution," and he started raining threes with himself. <laughs> I think he he ended up with like like. 30, 40 points with himself. I'm like, how is this even possible? <laughs> you telling me he shot threes with himself? Yes, he was driving to the paint, doing everything with his own oh. player. <laughs> oh, God. You would have thought, like, out of all the players in the NBA, you would not play as yourself. <laughs> I don't know. I see Patrick Beverly as that type of dude, though. Like, he'll take himself and make and all the points and be MVP. 
He he was MVP that day. I just, <laughs> you know, I just I just wanted to play. He hurt my feelings. <laughs> I just want a rematch. <laughs> oh man. This time on PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But speaking of like I guess unequal opportunities. Do you think in the gaming community there's like um equal opportunity between minorities and different genders? Uh there's still a gap in that area, I believe. Like um you could see like, you know, there's influences in terms of like, you know, characters and stuff like that, but still the storylines and mm -hmm. you know the storylines that get depicted within gaming also translate into the gaming community. You know, uh, it doesn't necessarily translate in terms of like sports because sports, you know, of course is minority based. Yeah. Most, yeah. For most of them, except maybe golf, but they still use the pitch in golf with like Tiger and you know but unless it's racing it's like you know it's the cars you know and then you know who's the driver but you know you have the issue with like Bubba Wallace and then is Bubba Wallace gonna be on the cover of NASCAR you know nah, the video game I don't huh. know you know um are we gonna get a a, a minority hockey player on a NHL 2022 I, you know it's it's one of those things where i feel the gaming community slowly but surely especially in the events now is is spending i know there's still like issues with you know you'll probably stream and run into people that are like you know oh she's a girl she can't really game like that and i'm gonna be honest some of these girls are better than dudes. <laughs> are you sure about that, man? Are some. You sure? Keyword, some. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I know there's a lot of them, like, you know, uh, Sniper Wolf. She's like, uh, <laughs> she, she's faking her gameplay. I mean, I don't know about, I don't know if she really is or not. There's rumors that she is. I don't, I don't hey. know. And I don't care. You know what? There's, there's a lot of gamers that actually, you know, they, they do pay others. Um, I don't know specifically, you know, whom, but, you know, you you hear about it, you know, like, oh, you know, especially the ones that don't stream, they just do put out content. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the voiceover, but you don't necessarily see them. You see more of like a commentary yeah and, and it's like okay are they really playing or you know but i yeah, guess see that's my thing with like some of those twitch streamer girls like yeah it seemed like they're not really playing the game at all and i mean i'm not trying to say like they're not they don't know how to play just because they're girls i'm saying like because of like it seems like they're trying to get more attention on their looks than yep. their actual gaming skills yeah I have no problem with girls playing video games my little sister was playing video games with me <laughs> when we were little. So, and my older sister too. So it's like, and I know girl gamers that play 2K. So it's like, to me, I have no problem with girls playing video games. I have a problem when it's like the girls that are just, they're, they're drawing the male gamers yep. with just their looks and they're just sitting there <laughs> oh, they like what they see. Oh my gosh! Thank you, thank you for your hundred dollar donation. Now you can sub to my channel for nineteen ninety nine ninety nine for extra picks, and then you you get like this little postcard. <laughs> Bro, did you hear about the whole Bella Delphine OnlyFans shit? Oh man, <laughs> that has got to be the most trollish simpish shit to happen Bruh, to it, yet with, with those things i 
I, I feel bad, you know, like it, it becomes an area where it's like you, you, you got to pick and choose, you know, like I support, you know, I will only support, you know, if you're, you know, respectable, you know, I've watched yeah. a lot of different girl streamers, you know, I've even reached out to some of them and they've responded. You know, and those are the cool ones, but then you see ones that are doing it for the show. Yeah. You know, and like a Lenity. Oh man. <laughs> it's like it's I'm like, what? There. It's, like <laughs> it's like it's like it's like what what why why do you gotta, you know, do all that? You know, we already yeah. know you're pretty. We already know you look fantastic, but yeah, I mean, it's just girls capitalizing on their looks, and they know they can capitalize on it. Yeah. And they know that this is probably going to be, like, the only time they could really make the most money that they're making right now. Yep. <laughs> you know? I mean, because if it, if it was us, if we could capitalize on our looks, <laughs> hell, <laughs> I'll do it too. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> be like, yeah, subscribe to my OnlyFans page. You know, you might see some dick pics. And I'm just oh, throwing out feet and shit. <laughs> like, start throwing the hair around. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm Fabio or something. <laughs> You'll be able to see exclusive pics of me. <laughs> exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Quarantine, quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tori. Um <laughs> You're definitely too much, man. But I know I'm a savage. Um. <laughs> oh man, but hey, man, we're gonna take a break right now, and we're gonna talk about some more things after the break. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. So we're gonna take a break right now, you guys. And like we shouldn't say in a scary movie, I'll be right back. now so right now we are gonna change gears a bit we're gonna talk about a little bit about some halloween traditions man you know because it's the halloween season you know it's october so do you usually have any halloween traditions man or do you have any best halloween memories that uh, you can remember? let me see best halloween memory would have to be I went to this horror house, not horror house, but horror house. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been very traumatizing and scary if I went to a horror house. I um, mean, you could have been Lemon Pepper Lou, man. You know? Oh, God. <laughs> it would have been horrible. You were just in there for the chicken wings, man. I, I would have been like Richard Pryor right now. <laughs> you know, when, when he turned into a ghost. Oh, um, God. <laughs> Uh, R.I.P. to the goat. And, yeah. Uh, we went to this house in um. It was when I was at college, and it was like this barn, abandoned barn in Napa, California. Yeah. There's no lights. There's no like big cities around, so everything's pitch black. It looks like something out of like Amityville Chainsaw Massacre, like. You know, and it looks like that every single day. It's not just like, <laughs> oh, this is decorated for Halloween. Like, no, like you literally like just looking at the place, it looks like you're about to get like sliced in like you're gonna get killed. Like <laughs> <laughs> like why am I going in here? Is this for my delight or is it for like Man, I had to carry my scissors. Like, <laughs> <laughs> your little shake, man. <laughs> I'm like, if something pops out, dude, I'm like, I'm going to freaking stab whoever it is. I don't care. If you're part of the Mickey Mouse Club, it's okay. <laughs> you're, you're going to, you're going to Two Town. 
when when all the lights go out, okay? Uh, Man, this ain't who framed Roger <laughs> Rabbit. What the fuck? <laughs> well, most people think who framed Roger Rabbit was was basically him in limbo. So. Oh man, I it, haven't heard that one before. Hey, it could be true. You never know. <laughs> you know, it, it's like where did all these tunes come from? Yeah. You know, but it was it was very creepy because like they had all these real chainsaws. They had all these like everything was real. Really? That's, yes. Like they didn't cut any corners. And then two, like the smell in there, like it smelled like manure. Uh it had like a little like meaty smell to it. The fuck? So I think they used some of the like cow um blood and like stuff to like leftovers to like get that ambiance and yeah it was freaky they were chasing everybody like and then they had a maze through the cornfield at that moment i was like okay we'll go through this cornfield but after like an hour and a half and we can't find our way out yeah you're on your own (laughs) (laughs) Because I've seen every single movie about cornfields. This is not going to (laughs) work. Oh, man. Oh, man. There was this trippy thing. So, like, in the cornfield, and normally it's just you're trying to find your way out of the cornfield. There were people hiding in the cornfield, bro. (laughs) And I didn't expect that. I thought I was like, oh, you're just going to walk through the cornfield. And, like, one of the things, like, Northern California, you have, like, thick fog. Mm -hmm. You got, like, this cold, like, it gets cold at night. The sky is clear, so you can see, like, this eerie, like, dark sky. But then you can see the stars. Like, it's just, man, it just fit. It just really fit. And, like, it just made it that much more scary in terms of it. Because I was just like, okay, this is not cool. You know? <laughs> like, I was, I, I think I punched somebody because I was under the influence that night. I remember. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was, I was. You man. told me you punched somebody like you were Randy Orton and shit. <laughs> like... <laughs> RKO. <laughs> it was, it was, man, it was amazing. No, that was, it had to be one of the best experiences. In terms of tradition, though, um, I think I didn't really like. There was a, I think I've dre- I've dressed up, but most of it was like you know, it was more safe. In yeah, terms of like my costumes, like I think I dressed up one year as Aladdin. The next year, <laughs> the next couple of years, I dressed up as like dead civil rights activists. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> which was kind of brutal. Like you're dressing up as Malcolm X, you're dressing up as Martin Luther King. Like both of them dudes got popped, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No offense, no offense, but it's like, damn, dog, you know, I felt like I was in a boat thuds at Harmony. (laughs) 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 You know, it's like, man, do I put blood here, blood here? Like, I know, you know, (laughs) King got shot in the head, and then Malcolm, he was just like, bah, 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 bah. Oh, man, yeah, that was gruesome how they did (laughs) it, man. (laughs) But, you know, um, and then, yeah, that night when I was in the cornfield, I was dressed up as a Chippendale, so. Oh, God. <laughs> so you got to imagine, you got to imagine how that was cold a I was. Stuff. Oh, man. It was, the only, it was the only costume left. 
<laughs> yeah, that was really sus. <laughs> yeah, it was the only costume left. It was either that or a monk. <laughs> I think I think I carried the monk costume because I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but because the monk had like a hood, it ended up looking like I was a Jedi or something. So. No. <laughs> like, oh, hello, Mr. Skywalker. And then, Man, so so you were so you were a Chippendale monk that looked like a Jedi. So you were yeah. like so you were Luke Cockwalker? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> A.K.A. the Anakin that slayed all those poor kids in episode <laughs> two. <laughs> Wait. Spoiler, kids. <laughs> Spoiler, kids. Anakin was not a saint. He was dark. Very dark. Oh, man. If you have not seen that clip, look it up on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, for real though. Yeah, I think for me, like the one experience that still lives with me for as far as like a, a Halloween experience was when I was in college also. So um when I was living you remember when I was living in my apartment, right? Yep. Yeah. So I remember very well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that sounded very sus <laughs> not like that people nope nope <laughs> it was a cool pad it was a cool pad <laughs> oh man but um i went to a party and i took one of the homies i don't know if you remember um the homie j-lo you know mm. yeah so for some of you guys that don't know, no, I'm not talking about Jennifer Lopez. It's just AKA like, Jenny from the block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just a dude that had a name and his last name was. So we call him J-Lo. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> so me and him, we went to like this party that one of my roommates was throwing with his, um, with his club. So we go there you know i drive over there we in this area that's like you know how like you were saying like you were in an area where it's like all quiet and it looked like yep. you know some type of amityville horror well, i was <laughs> in like an area that looked like straight up get out oh gosh no. <laughs> and it looked like if me and him stepped out of the car we were gonna get snatched up real quick did you see a guy running at you <laughs> 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 no, I didn't see one. I thought I coming did. at you. It's like run, run. Like, I thought I did, but he was just running to his car. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, nah, but so we go to this party, right? And I'm in costume. He's not, you know. He, J, you know, J Lo. He's like, yep. yeah, I'm J Lo. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm me, I'm me. You know, I'm a thug, <laughs> like. Yep. So, me, I'm dressed up, like, in my Saw outfit. You remember the Saw mask that I had? The little... Oh, my God. The Billy the Puppet doll mask? Yep. Yeah, it yep. was so dope. And I can't believe I still found that that um, mask in Rite Aid, man. That still trips me out to this day. Like, that was I, such a good mask. That, that's, that's, that, that, you know what? Rite Aid, a.k.a. Thrifties. <laughs> AKA where where you get those band aids with your favorite cartoon characters is the goal. <laughs> For real though, they were. It was crazy because that writing was like literally down the street from my apartment. So, yep. and I wasn't even trying to find like a a cost. No, actually, I think I was trying to find a costume. I was just like, let me see if I could find a mask that's like whatever. You know, I was trying to find like some rinky dink, like you know hey, I got a clown face mask, but instead I ended up finding, like, that Billy the Puppet mask, and I'm like, bro, this is the gold right here, <laughs> like, Man. you know, so. You found the landmine, bro. Bro, I did. I did, did you, man. Did you hear about the new um, Saw movie coming? Yeah, I do. Man, I'm kind of upset that they gotta push it back, though. Yeah, but, you know, with the cast they have, you know, it's not gonna be you know, I don't, I don't feel it's going to be as time crucial. 
Yeah. Um, and I feel like because this is, you know, from what they were saying, it's the same universe. Mm-hmm. So, but, it, but it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Which I I respect them for doing that because I like what they did with Jigsaw. But I want really? to see like, yeah, I actually like Jigsaw. But I didn't like how after Jigsaw died, all right, I saw how they were trying to like, like after Saw, let me see, one, two, three, four. Like once it came to like, the alternate stories, it just became like, <laughs> where are you guys going here? Like, one, the the last act, he was still alive. It was like he he died. He died. Like, yeah. bro, just just carry. Like he died. He completed his mission. He killed possibly everybody. But then they had to continue it. It's then the story you know, to where it comes full circle and you start forgetting Danny Glover was ever in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> then somehow at the end hard. you're like you're like oh, wait, what? Like <laughs> so you mean to tell me you just saw planned all of this even after he was dead? Yeah, it, it does oh, become what? ridiculous. <laughs> like it's like, like, how does he manage to plan all of this from happening? Like, how does uh, he know? No one is that um, it, it, omnipotent. It <laughs> made know? sense, you know, from when he was alive. You know, he knew who messed him over, you know, in terms of, like, his life, what he wanted, his wife, his his cancer, all of that, you know, which is, you know, that was actually a compelling story. Like, yeah, I do like the fact that they were, it was like a tale of just almost like revenge in a way. Yep. Because he, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a guy that had bad cards thrown at him, you know? Yeah. And, you know, at some point, you know, you, you, you snap because it, it becomes like, when is it? when is it my turn to have my happiness, you know? Yeah. And I was actually rooting for Jigsaw until they just started extending the series and just digging a hole. Kind of like Star <laughs> Wars, man. Sometimes you gotta... Oh, be, man. You just gotta stop and say, you know what? I think this next one should be the end of it all. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you know, know what? the same could be said about like the Friday the 13th franchises. Those oh god. I, I like the only ones that really would that really told a story was four through six. Yeah. One to three didn't didn't really mean shit. And I really wow. thought one was stupid. I mean, yeah. I, I a lot of people are probably gonna give me flack for it, but it was dumb because it was like, how did the mother become the killer? And like she wasn't yeah. even mentioned throughout the whole damn film at all. No. And she just appears, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm a friend of the blah 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 that owns the place." See? And yeah, I'm I'm Jason's mother. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! But like so, that was random. So who who's who's Jason then? <laughs> like, are are you, are you like? Did you just kidnap him? Right. How do right? we how do we know you're actually the mother? <laughs> right. You know, like there there's certain questions that never get answered. You know. Yeah. And then what I thought was ridiculous was um, in part, I believe it was six, even though six was trying to still tell a story, I found it ridiculous when Jason was dead that Tommy Jarvis, you know, put mm-hmm. the little fucking pike into Jason, the little thunderstorm <laughs> comes in, and he just gets this Frankenstein rejuvenation shit going on, and now Jason is this unstoppable beast. It's like, See, and that's the thing. Like the earlier Jason, you had like where he was affected. He was like, Ugh, uh, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, when I look at Jason, I see Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually correction. I see Frankenstein monster. monster. <laughs> yeah, you know, because everybody gets that wrong. You're like, 
I'm Frankenstein. And I'm like, you're the scientist? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's like certain myths get thrown out and it's like they don't know like what the actual character is. It's like the Wolfman, you know, I'm Jekyll. Like, oh, oh, and who's Mr. Hyde? Right. Like, <laughs> Dude, Mr. Hyde was literally the version of early Michael Myers, man. That dude was yep. fucking, that dude's a fucking killer. And now, you know what? I think, you know, in terms of the horror, they're, that's one of the, some of the things they're probably going to be rebooting is probably going to be Jason. They're probably going to redo Freddy. Well, that's the thing like, right now, like, because I don't, well, I don't know if you know this, but there's like a court case between Victor Miller and Sean S. Cunningham. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty much arguing, well, they're pretty much fighting over the rights for Jason. See. So right now it's a big dispute that's happening, which is putting a lot of like Jason movies and, and including the game, like the development of the game on hold. See, that's why I'm keeping Mortal Kombat. X very close <laughs> to me. <laughs> Just like how Spider Man was in limbo. <laughs> Man, you were like, no, we're not going to get a Spider Man for another 20 years. <laughs> but that's the same thing with X Men. When, yeah. when Marvel got moved to, to Disney, everybody was like, no, what's going to happen to X-Men? What's going to happen to X-Men? And now Disney was like, oh, fuck it. We're going to buy all of Fox. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, <laughs> we got X-Men. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But let me, let me actually go back to my story for a bit. Um, so we go to the party. You know, there's drinks, there's you know, laughter and what have you. And like the police come. <laughs> yeah. So apparently they came once already, but when we got there, this is their second time coming. So we're sitting there like, what the fuck? So I'm sitting here like, fuck. I hope this place isn't getting raided because I'm at a college party and I'm pretty sure there's some underage drinking. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm holding up the drink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all been to college. Well, you know, for those that been to college, you know, we, we've been to college. There's always underage drinking, so. Yep. But, yeah, Kids, I was... Wait till you're old enough. <laughs> <laughs> so... We're like, fuck, okay, what's going to happen? So they kept the party going. So they turned, like, the music down a little bit, and we're just chilling, you know. People, like, congratulating me on my Saw mask and Saw outfit. They're like, oh, my God, look, it's, it's Saw, it's Saw, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just sitting there chilling, you know. I got my drink in my hand and everything. Then all of a sudden, like, I kid you not, maybe, like, 30 minutes later, the police rolled through again. <laughs> this time, they were shutting down the party. See, And they were like, look, if y'all don't shut it down now, we're going to start checking everybody's age. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not old enough to drink, you are going to jail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everybody was like, oh, I guess party's over. <laughs> they leave a recording. Shh. Yeah, you play man. a game. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, no, we don't want to play a game. <laughs> it was funny because, like, when me and Jayla were leaving, you know, this was when I was really heavily bumping Odd Future and everything. So, how yeah, Wolf Gang? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, with so Haji Beats, that's that's in the crew. He has this song on his album called "Fuck the Police." So on my way leaving, I was like, hey, J-Lo, I got this song where it says, fuck the police. You think we should be playing that right now? He's like, hell yeah, because, you know, this is J-Lo, man. <laughs> He's the type of motherfucker that'd be like, hell yeah, do that shit. <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> like, so as we headed out, I had that shit blasted all high. Fuck the police. Motherfuck the police. And I'm just like driving off and shit. 
and we just head back to the apartment and just kick it for a bit. Man, it's it's one of those things where it's like, dude, like I I feel like there was more of a freedom, like you know, I I kind of miss a lot of that, you know, fluidity, you know. Um, yeah. But you know, everything has its moments, you know. Um, oh yeah, man. I mean, you gotta get older and and move on and do better things after that. Yep. So what? What? Uh, were there ever any like specific um, um, other traditions that you grew up with in terms of uh, Halloween horror? Um. Well, I try and do like a 31 days of horror every year now since starting the podcast. Well, yeah, since starting the podcast, but huh, I, it, it's hard to do that. <laughs> I, I, I fucked it up already for this month. So <laughs> so if anybody's wondering if I'm doing a 31 days, man, I, I already fucked it up. So, <laughs> But I'm still trying to get my movies in. Yep. But as far as like traditions, man, um... And when I was a kid, I mean, the most I did was ever go to like the the Crenshaw Mall when that was a thing, man. Yeah, the yeah. biggest fear was gangbangers stealing your candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't come know about your, that. Come out your shit. <laughs> but I it to me all day. <laughs> And it would really suck if you go back home and you just came from Hollywood or Beverly Hills and got all the big candy and then you come home <laughs> you got in your bag. <laughs> and you got that look on your face like it's to be all day. I got the candy in here. <laughs> and you better give me your bag. You know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! And you end up getting your bag back. You only got three little pieces of candy. <laughs> <laughs> Some off-brand names. You got a Christmas there. <laughs> you got you got one little uh. Like candy like, bar. like like they took your Reese's and left you with Pete's. <laughs> <laughs> you got you you were like I was looking for my Kit Kat. Now I got Mic Mac. Like <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, can I get some of my candies? No. <laughs> you, better, you better mix up what you got and mix them together in a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. But um yeah, as far as traditions, man, I mean, yeah, when I was a kid, I used to go to the Crenshaw Mall. My mom would take me and my sister, we would hit up all the stores and they would give us candy. Because it was always, like, it was always safer that way, you know? Yep. Like, it wasn't that safe to just go house to house in our, <laughs> in our neighborhoods. It, I, I don't I don't think we had the tradition of going to random people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. That, that's, that's really for, like, yeah, other communities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it... You know, I only did that probably for like just on my block. You know, you'll go to people's doors, but like other than that, like I'm not going to the other person's block. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like we're <laughs> we're smarter than that. <laughs> you no, know, this is not Halloween Town, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys have a safe time. You know, make sure to call. Like, make sure to call. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's, like, it's, bitch, better call Ghostbusters. <laughs> man, that's one movie I can't wait for. Oh, the remake of that one. Yeah. And there's a Spawn movie coming. Oh, yeah. I heard. I heard. Yes, man. yes, they have the script, and supposedly they have 
some type of cast and director. And it's going to be, as opposed to what we had before, this is going to be horror-oriented. So Spawn is going to be like, kind of like vigilante slash scary. Like, oh, okay. So he's going to be popping in and out like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how Spawn was supposed to be. You know, angry and scary. So, I I can't wait, honestly. And they say Jamie Foxx is going to play Spawn. Uh, I don't know if I could agree with that, man. I I I know, but you know what? I mean, he was cool as Django, but I, I can't see him as Spawn. I, he he'll have to get to that dark element. You know, like you're you're an ex officer, your family is gone. You sold your soul. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta you gotta be that guy, you know. And I think at his age now, as opposed to when he did Ray, I think yeah. he'll he'll probably be better. You know, and I know now there's going to be a lot of emphasis on his acting because, spoiler, he's going to be Electro again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Uh, but to backtrack, <laughs> since we were talking about Ghostbusters, um, in Harold well, Ramis. Uh, <laughs> Ramis. <laughs> yep. Oh, man, but, um, his son and, is continuing the franchise. Wait, whose son? Uh, Harold Ramis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I I think it's gonna be good. You know, um, I saw the trailer. I hope they keep it in the element of that thriller. You know, like you don't know what to expect, but also, you know, you do have the comedy in there. Yeah, but I think for a current day and age, it's gonna be more. It 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 has to be more, you know, thriller, you know, like you gotta show a little bit to get people on the edge. Cause I don't think like the cheesy eighties. Oh yeah, you know, like we did have like the the um I think it was Ghostbusters one, mm -hmm. where uh they had um. What was it? it uh, the girl, she was possessed, right? Uh, I don't remember. It's been a uh, while since I've seen I that. Think, I think she was possessed by like an ancient ghost from like the, the old medieval times. And they were coming back and released all the ghosts. And it was like the whole city of New York was in turmoil. It, it, like, now imagine that in the 2020 darker outlook you know oh man that, that's gonna look crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know you're at utter destruction we're gonna kill you all like <laughs> yeah, you but, call? Um, in your bio in your bio that um that i had you kind of like send me and everything yep. you mentioned that you you've seen like ghosts before do you kind of want to touch base on that yeah so I've had a lot of different experiences, you know, I've had, you know, one major, you know, one in short was my grandmother, you know, um, when she passed, it was like a sudden thing for me, you know, being so young, I was like 11 and she was very influential, you know, and for some reason, like the night she passed away, I wanted to go over to her house within hours before she passed away and yeah I didn't end up finding out until a few days later you know they already pulled the plug you know I come mm -hmm. to the hospital and they're like she's gone but like uh, I believe a few it was either a few days after the funeral or the day after the funeral or the day 
uh, the day after the funeral or the day of um, later on that day of the funeral. I remember walking past my hallway and like mm -hmm. right on the corner of my eye, there's a couch. There was my couch. And I, right when you're passing by the hallway and I could see at the corner of my eye, it's like a flash, she's sleeping right there. And then I have like this aroma and smell that heavily just hits me. And it's like, that's, like that's her smell like yeah. it it freaked me out because it was like she's there you know and then i turned around it's like she's gone you know but she was so calm you know and then you know i heard her like a few months later i was at her house her old um house where she was staying and i heard her humming and i'm like what in the shit? Like, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, but she was very like into um she was she Christian woman, you know, but like, you know, me reading biblically and stuff like that, and like, you know, you know, when you believe in heaven, you gotta believe there's a hell, you know, because you can't pick one and choose one, you know, you gotta yeah. like one is not equal without the other. And yeah, see, my boy, um, Jacob, he said the same thing on the last episode. He said, yep. you know, you got to believe in heaven and hell. Like, if you believe in, if you believe in God, you got to believe in the devil also. Yep. You, you, like, in all honesty, it's all facts because, you know, like all the movies, like most of these movies, most of these things that come from myth, they all come from some type of experience that has happened. So like, you know, when people mention like all these different things and movies and, you know, you hear all these stories globally, you know, in different languages. And it's like, how do these people know stuff that's happening in my area, you mm -hmm. know, and vice versa, like, are we all interconnected like we don't speak the same language but yet some of the same things happening there is happening here and what they read is what we read you know it's not humanly possible especially during like the the times where there were no planes and like it took months for ships to sail for you to get all this information globally you know, when you think the world is flat, like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, who, who mentioned the world was flat? Oh, it was, man. It was Kyrie. It was, it was a couple of people. <laughs> and if the world was flat, I would literally run across the water. Because <laughs> there's nowhere I would at, honestly go besides to the other side. But it, it's, it's, um, I honestly think, you know, in terms of like afterlife, heaven, hell, it, it's all equally there, you know, um, they're all, you know, interconnected, you know, just like we are with each other. Uh, we are with the supernatural, you know, um, you know, when we do die, you know, or when we feel like certain things, like people around you, or you're like, when you get in trouble and you know, like your parent is there and you feel like that little heat on the back of your neck, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, damn it, I'm going to get my, I'm, well, you know, another thing, 90s kids, we used to get whoopings. And there were no charges. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. Like, my mom would tell me all the time, like, yeah, if you call the cops on me, I'm going to make sure I beat you real good <laughs> before they take me away. <laughs> and for some reason, that scared the shit out of me even more. Man, but it's it's the truth. You, you establish that, you know, inside the home, you know, before it could be established outside. 
because yeah you know nowadays it's like a huge issue you know in terms of parenting like not to say it should be done you know it should only be used in terms of like you know if you know you're you're a parent to be you know that confidant you're a parent to be that um person you can trust but also you're not to be like oh this is my best friend we going to the club like yeah, yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> like the only time you come here to the club with my mom is probably shoot i don't think ever oh <laughs> <laughs> that part because that will be awkwardly weird <laughs> yeah, and she starts pulling all these girls hey I pulled this girl for you. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls like the most uh, like most mm-hmm. average looking chick that you wouldn't even talk to. You just oh like, man. Like, come on, Bob. Like, she has so doing? much in common with you. She's such a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I ain't looking for a nice lady, Mom. <laughs> I showed her all your baby pictures. Like, oh no. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? And then you just have to dance with that chick afterwards, after all that? Dude, it's not even a dancing with her. Imagine your mom looking. <laughs> I know, she's just going to look intently. She's going to just have that me mug look like. Oh, he's growing up so fast. <laughs> like, oh, gosh. She's going to be like, keep it arm's length. Keep it arm's length. <laughs> Don't touch her booty now. <laughs> all you thinking in your head is like, but I don't even want to touch her booty. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's probably one one thing that's like, you know, you 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 get to that moment where it's like you gotta separate, you know, certain things, you know, in parenting. But you know yeah. in in terms of, you know, some stories, it's a little different. Yeah. You know. Um yeah. I feel yeah. bar- I feel bad for Tori. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, you guys, thank you, Spencer, for coming on to the show, man. <laughs> thank you, man. You know, you can find him, Spencer the ga- 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 tongue tie. You can find him, Spencer the Gamer, at Instagram, and Spencer L Artist at Twitter, right? Yep. Twitter and Spencer the Gamer on YouTube. Um, I will be uploading uh, within this next within this month. You know, uh, I'm gonna be having fun with the commentating, and <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go on the journey. You know, I would play be playing all types of different games, even games you mentioned. We going we gonna do this thing. Yeah. Wow, all right. wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we are going to take a break again and we will be back with the outro. And we're back. We are back with the outro. And as you guys know, I o- always have like a must watch Tubi movie of the week to watch. But right now, I'm going to pass it over to my guests. Whenever I have a guest on the show, I usually have them suggest movies for you guys to watch. So, Spencer, what movie do you got? Uh, for my guest today i swear i can't get this out by the way people it's so late at night by the way (laughs) we're recording like what it's like two right now (laughs) it's five in the morning it's five (laughs) give or take take. yeah yeah but what movies are you gonna suggest uh you know what there is there there's a couple you know um I would say if you're into um like um movies about um kind of like action and like um the aspect of like uh, the the um the afterlife mm-hmm. um you could possibly go with um what's this movie on Netflix? Um hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I got it right. 
Because <laughs> I, I kind of, it, it's called The Old Guard. So it's on Netflix. Oh, so, okay, okay. You know, basically in short, it's about, you know, these people that walk among us that have not died. Yeah. And they basically have like eternal embodiment. But, you know, that remains to be seen. I'll let y'all watch it. It's really good. Sorry, Staren. A couple other people are in it. They're really good. New actors. Uh, I'm kind of been on like this Netflix binge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you, as the as well as a lot of people, you know. Oh man, it's been it's been a struggle. Um, if you have if you like uh, comedy horror. I don't know if you ever seen The Babysitter. Yes, I have. I've watched The Babysitter sequel also. <laughs> <laughs> I I have I was meaning to give a review about that movie too for the podcast, but I never got around to it. Don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil it, but but yeah, yeah. Hey, that, that guaranteed was... watch watch the first one and then watch the second one. Hey, but that, um, pl- that plot twist in the middle of the movie, I did oh not, I did gosh. not, I was not expecting it. I was really not expecting it. I didn't expect anything for the second movie because I was like, like, yeah. w- wait, wait, hold on. I had to think back. I'm glad they kind of had like a, you know, refresher a little bit. Yeah. But then it was like, damn, for real? So you know it, it kind of like was like a memento moment yeah you know? so i actually liked how they ended it but at the same time there's still cliffhangers and oh, stuff yeah. that wasn't explained because i was like a little twisted when it first started i'm like wait hold on what's going on here like yeah you know i could understand making a sequel but the way they did it, it was just like, wow. I mean, I mean, it's a comedy <laughs> horror. It was it meant to be. Okay, weird. okay. We, I gave I gave it its pass because it's it was meant to be weird like that, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I give them credit though for like the different effects they they pulled. They kind of oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> they it was good. They 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 were just blowing, having too much fun with the pyrotechnics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me the only thing I didn't like about the movie was the jokes. I didn't think the jokes were all that funny, especially yeah. with King Batch. I didn't oh, think he was gosh. funny in this movie. They, At least for the sequel, the the first one he was funny. The sequel, it, I didn't find him funny that much. It's because they were trying to, you know, like every sequel they try to outdo the first movie. Yeah. And, it, it kind of, um, you know, it kind of messes up the organic elements of it. So, you know, it wasn't that bad in terms of being a sequel. Yeah. But I'll, I'll say they possibly need a third to really. Quit. I feel like they might bring a Cause, third. Because I know, like, you know, um, I like, I, I know sequels, you know, certain sequels don't stand up to the, to the first movie. And that some sequels are better than the first movie. Yeah. But I think in this case, they're going to need a third movie, you know, and sometimes, you know, some sequels are better than the first movie and then the third movie is a bomber. So, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll see. Um, I, you know, um, I think it's going to get better, though. I, I, yeah. I, I ho- or at least I hope it gets better. Um, you also got, um, let me see, there was this one movie I was watching. Um, uh, it was with Tom Holland. So it's more oh, of Oh, Devil All the Time. Thriller. Yeah, it's more of a thriller. I don't know if you ever saw it. I've been trying to watch it, but I've been so off, like, literally this whole week. 
well, the past couple of weeks. I haven't gotten time to watch it, man. It was pretty. It because it, it's Tom for, Holland, Robert Robert Pattinson, Bill Skarsgård, and yeah, like a couple uh, other people. And I'm it, just it was like, it was a different cast. I thought it was gonna be like, how is this gonna work? You mm-hmm. know, you got you got Spider Man and you got Twilight. <laughs> hey, 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 he's Batman. Keep, keep, keep stay calm. You got Spider Man and Batman. It can't, <laughs> can't be worse than Christian Bale. But oh, don't for, don't forget it was Pennywise was in there too. Oh gosh. <laughs> so but I gotta admit that there were twisted elements in this movie that just was like. What in the world is going on in this place? <laughs> like, like, what, you know? And it's based on a book. So, you know, the whole narration is actually being done by the author himself. Oh, okay. So it kind of has, um, you know, it, it goes through, you know, different pacings. You know, it, it does go a little slow. Mm-hmm. But it does speed up in terms of like the storyline later on in the middle, and it's it's pretty good, you know. It's a good story, um, two hours, you know. Um, you know, if you like something that messes with your head a little bit and messes with your personal beliefs a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might get offended in a lot of ways, you know. It, it's it's one of those, so be prepared because Tom Holland <laughs> is not Mr. Neighborhood Friendly Spider. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it 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 was it was great to see a different side of both of them because they actually balance each other out. Yeah. I didn't I didn't feel overwhelmed. You know, I actually liked Robert Pattinson. You know, um, he played his role really well. Um, but you know, that's for you. He's actually a decent actor, honestly. You know, Twilight, Twilight was really like that, that little blip in his career, you know? Yep. And then you also got, uh, this other movie I watched. It's called Alive. Oh, I've, I swear, I've been trying to watch that one, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, I actually liked it, you know, um, it's a foreign, you know, Korean film, uh, there's a lot of foreign horror films out right now, I know yeah. people don't like reading subtitles and stuff, and, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of people, man, you know, I, I love it, I love the foreign I, film. Man, the foreign films, I must say, have taken over the horror genre. And yeah. I'm saying that on record because <laughs> there has been a divide from the gore elements of horror in terms of, you know, American made movies. Yeah. I think that's partially because, you know, people want the psychological cool thriller more than the horror and gore um oh man i'm speaking bars Um, (laughs) (laughs) but i i i honestly they have they balance both of them actually you know where you have both and it's a story that actually you know it's it's it has a good pace you know they don't run run it out in terms of you know uh, staying to one specific element, you know, they push the limits, you know, with not necessarily the same budget as U.S. films. So, um, and it's great to see, like, you know, um, up and coming or indie um, writers at the forefront. So, you know, yeah. the way I look at it, like, it, it's going to come back, you know, as long as we have, you know, certain um, individuals coming up with different scripts, um, I, I feel like there's still hope. Um, I know 
uh, Todd McFarlane, you know, speaking of Spawn, has been working for probably over 10 years trying to get this one movie. <laughs> and it's been like, everyone is like, when is it coming? When is it coming? When is it coming? Is it going to be R-rated? You know, I think it'll be R-rated. And I know he's pushing for it to be R-rated. Um, it's, you know, it's just, when are we going to get it? Are we going to see guys tied up in the air, leaking blood through their veins and stuff like that, you know? Because Spawn was a carnivore, so. Yeah. I can't wait, because Spawn is, yeah, he's my all-time favorite. And, you know, we do got Blade coming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, you know, but I think Spawn is the ultimate. I, you know, you have everything in it. You can't, like, whoever takes it, you better not mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> you got right. vampires, you got demons, you got everything. You got right. everything. Like, you messed that up. You basically messed up your career. And <laughs> like Shyamalan, I'm speaking about you. What you did to Avatar. <laughs> oh, man. And on that note, thank you again, Spencer, for coming to the show, man. Once again, can you drop your social media for us? It is Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R-D-A-G-A-M-E-R -E -E at YouTube. And I am Spencer, D-A-A-R-T-I-S-T -A -A on Instagram. And Spencer L. Artist on Twitter. All right. Thanks again, Spencer the Gamer, guys. And as you guys know, you can follow me. Walter Doom on Instagram and Walter Doom one on Twitter because some asshole took Walter Doom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so as you guys know, I always got a gripe about that shit. But other than that, this has been another episode of Let's Talk About Horror. I, I even forgot to do the gang gang, man. I mean, I've been doing gang gang, gang for I've been gang, doing gang. Gang, gang for everybody that's been coming on. I forgot to do the gang gang with you, man. Choo choo. Um, <laughs> skirt, skirt. <laughs> but anyway this has been another episode you guys this is america don't let them catch you slipping now peace love get home safe or be home safe or stay home fuck it whatever i'm tired as fuck <laughs> we out <laughs>